Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> On behalf of the administration, faculty, staff, and graduates, I would like to welcome family, friends, and relatives to the 2012 commencement service of Berean Baptist Academy. Tonight, we pause to remember and to celebrate the struggles and the accomplishments of our seniors who are about to enter an exciting and challenging phase of their young lives. The significance of their achievements will be measured over many years to come as our ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ as they continue to make their impact on this world. We would like to take this time to give all honor and glory to our God and Savior for his never failing grace and mercy. Thank you parents, grandparents, guardians, and multitude of family members. You all have been so instrumental in producing the exceptional young adults seated before us tonight. Seniors, thank you for the influence that you have had upon all of our lives as we have labored and prayed and laughed and ministered together. We trust that this evening will be an amazing time as we reflect upon just how good God is to us all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are here to honor your name with all that we do and all that we say. We are so thankful that you have blessed us with the opportunity and the privilege to labor and minister alongside parents and students and fellow staff. And dear God, tonight as we look into the lives of our young people and we celebrate their accomplishments and their achievements and their struggles, help us, Lord, to remember that it's all made possible because you are a good and loving and merciful and giving God. And you are in control of all things. And we trust you for that. Bless this time tonight that it would be exceedingly glorifying to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Brandon Kerr, the son of Tim and Corinda Kerr, tragically passed away this past month. He was in our fourth grade at the academy. A visitor attending the funeral in this very auditorium was so moved by the love and compassion that was given to the Kerr family as well as the love and compassion that the Kerr family gave out to all of us at that service, that he called me later and pledged to donate $2,500 every year to be given to a deserving senior in honor of Brandon's life. A scholarship committee was formed and the Brandon Kerr Memorial Scholarship was established. The committee was developed and the following criteria for the recipient was given. The senior must be a born-again believer who has attended BBA for at least two years. The senior must reveal a financial need and be characterized by hard work, a joyful spirit, and a positive attitude. And finally, the scholarship money will be paid directly to the college or university that that student will attend. The scholarship committee met and determined that the recipient of this year's inaugural Brandon Kerr Memorial Scholarship is Mr. Andrew Dale Whiting. Tonight we'll be recognizing three students for their outstanding accomplishments during their years here at Berean Baptist Academy. The Christian Leadership Award is given annually to that student who exhibits the most consistent testimony of godly character, loyalty, leadership, and service as voted upon by the faculty and their fellow seniors. It is my privilege to present this year's award to Ms. Isabella Torres. This year's salutatorian is an intelligent, mature young man who has played on our school's soccer and basketball teams. 
He is viewed by his peers as a consistent, studious young man who consistently strives to do his best. He has made a great impact on our academy with his patient, godly spirit. The 2012 salutatorian of Berean Baptist Academy is Mr. Andrew Dale Whiting. Friends, family, teachers, and classmates, welcome to the graduation of the class of 2012. First of all, I would like to start off by telling you that number one, I'm not much of a public speaker, and number two, don't procrastinate if you ever have to write a speech like this. <laughs> the danger of procrastination is something that I think a lot of my senior class learned the hard way. Regardless of this, we have made it, and for that, we have many people to thank. First, we have our parents to thank. They birthed us, provided for us, and loved us enough to invest in our lives by putting us in a school where we could have a good, godly influence. Next, we have our teachers. Our teachers, whether or not we realize it, have made a huge sacrifice so that they could teach at a Christian school where they can be part of changing lives. As one teacher put it during the revival at our 2010-2011 Get Acquainted Days, when people were getting right with God and others. This is why we do it. This is what it's all about. Lastly, <clears throat> we have each other to thank. We have encouraged and helped each other during hard times in the school year. We have made each other laugh, even on the worst of days, and have shared the best of days to make them that much better. But what now? I once saw a graduation poster that said, congratulations, the best years of your life are now over. Although we have not yet experienced life after high school, I believe I can speak for many of us when I say that without a doubt, our high school years here at Berean have been some of the best years of our lives. Now comes the real test. Now comes the rest of our lives. We have learned so much during our school years, and now comes the time where we have to put these principles to work in our lives. We must realize that we do not have everything figured out, and that there is still room for improvement. For most of us, this next learning step will be in college. Whether we're going to a Christian college or a secular college, we must remember that our ultimate goal in life is to bring glory to God through proclaiming His Word. But one thing that we have to be reminded of is that change happens, and we are just going to have to get used to it. When I say change happens, I don't mean that we change our beliefs or our standards, but that when we leave home, we will have to realize that things are going to be different and we are just going to have to get used to it. We're going to have to get used to doing work. Laziness, especially for those of us who get married, will destroy our family. For as the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5.8, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I stress on this point because I know from a personal experience how easy it is to be lazy. I know how easy it is to just say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, or somebody else will do it. But we can't live like this. We are about to go out into the real world, and it's time that we grow up and stop expecting everybody else to do everything for us. We are adults, and it's time we act like it. Now, this doesn't mean that we will know everything. Our parents are still great people to ask for advice when we don't know what to do. Never forget that they were in your spot at one point in their life and they probably know a little bit more about life than you do. But most importantly, never stop relying on God. Don't be that graduate that leaves home and church and never goes back to church. Always seek the will of God for your life and stay within that will. After all, it is only in the will of God that we will ever find true joy. All that being said, go out and enjoy life. Set goals and reach them. Show the world that you are ready for them and find out if they are ready for you. I love and will miss all of you. Thank you, and God bless you. <clears throat> the valedictorian is honored annually as the top student in the class based upon the cumulative grade point average over four years of high school. 
This year's valedictorian has taken all honors courses offered in every year of our high school. He's an energetic young man, yes, energetic young man, I know him well, who has involved himself every year in anything extra the academy might offer. Sports, choir, weightlifting, band, drama. He's even a fairly accomplished pianist. I'm honored and blessed and proud to present the 2012 valedictorian of Berean Baptist Academy, Mr. Keith Nathaniel Adams. My speech isn't up here. Good evening, friends, family, and class of 2012. I am greatly honored to have the privilege of standing before you and delivering my valedictorian speech. To all the friends and family who have taken time out of their busy schedules to come and join us in this celebration, welcome and thank you. There are many people whom I believe deserve our thanks for the time and effort that they put into seeing that we get the best possible education available. First and foremost, I believe God deserves our thanks. It is such a blessing for us to be able to attend a Christian school. It was by His grace that our parents were led to put us in this school in the first place. Furthermore, He has given us all capable minds which enable us to learn the truths that He, has teach, that he teaches us through Scripture. Secondly, I would like to thank our parents. None of us would be here today if it were not for you guys, and, we, and you guys deserve our thanks, and we love you. I would also like to thank our teachers and all the faculty here at Berean. One thing that I can promise you that we receive here at Berean that not many schools in America can offer is a solid Christian education. Daily, our teachers challenge us to not only be successful in our schoolwork, but also in our walk with God, and that, I believe, is a rare and precious gift. It is such a good feeling being in a place where I know my teachers genuinely, genuinely care about each and every student and our spiritual lives. I believe that the greatest gift we can receive here at Berean is our daily Bible class. It has been such a joy these past four years being taught under Pastor Smith, Pastor Sean, Mr. Farmer, and Pastor Sturm. It was very profitable to learn apologetics this year from Pastor Sturm. One thing that I can challenge my classmates to do in this new step that we will be taking in life is to not forget what we have done and learned here at Berean. We will now be faced with the challenge of putting our faith into practice. We will now be forced to think on our own. We must now learn what to stand for and what to stand against. We are going to be forced to distinguish between truth and deception, and we are all better prepared for that challenge thanks to the help of the godly teachers that have been brought into our lives. Whether we have been together since kindergarten or this is only our second year being together, we all have many good memories that we have shared together. One thing that I know we will never forget is our senior trip. We all learned many things from the crazy streets of New York, whether it was finding out how ridiculously loud and crowded the subway is or learning that we will be left behind if we are not downstairs in time for breakfast. We all had a good time, and I will never forget that amazing experience. Class of 2012, let us not be one of those classes you always hear about who graduate from Christian schools and then completely neglect what they were taught, who stop going to church, and who stop caring about God. Do not take for granted or waste what has been taught to us for years now. Do not, mm, God has truly blessed us with everything that we have received while here at Berean. A verse I would like to share with you is Joshua 1.9, which states, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Classmates, we are done with high school. We will little note nor remember what was said here tonight, but if there is one thing that we should try to never forget is this. Stay strong in our faith, and do not squander the efforts of those who have been teaching us biblical truths for years now. I will always keep you guys in my prayers, and I wish the best for all of you. Thank you.
How many can say that you sure are glad that young people are still learning how to sing like that? Yeah, sharp, articulate. It is my privilege to get to introduce to you the 1999 graduate of BBA, 1999. He'll be the 2012 commencement speaker. I have known Mark since second grade. That's how far back I can remember. And there are three things that make Mark stand out. And I'm going to articulate them very quickly. Number one, as long as I've known Mark for 20 plus years, he has consistently served the Lord. And he provides to every one of you a remarkable example in his perseverance in the faith through ins and outs, struggles, tough days, wondering what God's will is for his life, conversations that we've had concerning how God was to use him. Mark has remained faithful. Number two, Mark is an exceptionally hard worker, known for the fact that he is willing to do what it takes to provide for his family. And I thought it was quite appropriate that Andrew made specific reference to working hard in a day and age in which we are struggling with getting Americans to understand you're going to have to go to work in the morning, that everyone's got to go to work. And so I appreciate Andrew's pointedness. And then number three, Mark is a gentleman. Mark is a gentleman. He is a gentleman's gentleman. He is gracious. He is kind. He is considerate. He knows how to conduct himself well. And so he, I am sure, will give you a good challenge. And I pray that you do not forget it. I pray, God, that you would take away one nugget of truth that you're going to tuck away in the back of your mind and do your very best to live up to what Mark's challenge is for you. So come, Mark, challenge them. Test. Right on. Okay. I sound pretty amazing. All right. <laughs> I mean, thank you, Pastor, Pastor Harris. I'm definitely putting that on my Facebook profile. All right. <laughs> Twitter, there's not enough characters, but I will, I will condense it down. It'll be on my Twitter, so you can follow me on there. Thank you for the privilege to speak here. Uh, Mr. Don Adams contacted me a year ago, and our salutatorian speaker mentioned, don't procrastinate. Well, they contacted me a year ago. So, yeah, you know, got out the Pepto-Bismol, and I've consumed a bottle a week, getting ready for tonight. Got the speech ready about, about a year ago, and then I had a privilege to preach it at my home church, of course, I, you know, I got to go a little longer in time, which was probably not a good thing. So I appreciate the time constraints for tonight. And I've honed it down, tried to make it profitable for, of course, all of you are here, so you're going to be listening, unless you're on your iPhones or your, all those fancy devices that you're on. That's fine if you are. And, um, you know, if you fall asleep, that's okay. If I fall asleep, we have problems. <laughs> but I know all of you are going to be listening, but tonight I've been asked to speak to you, the graduating class. You know, one thing your dad didn't say, Mr. Adams, because I, I don't know you. He's going on and on about all these things. He didn't say how tall you were. How tall are you? Jerk. Okay. All right. All right. I thought, I thought Pastor Harris was going to say, Mark stands out because the dude is short. I mean, that's just all there is to it, right? So I'm about to come down and approach you in a minute. I'll be far enough away so if I spit, you shouldn't be hit. But you'll realize that I'm not that tall of a guy. But I have been watching a lot of Tom Cruise clips. I think I have a lot of his confidence. And so we'll be okay. I think, I think we'll be all right. So let's get started. I'm going to start out with a quote. I'm going to bring my notes down here to you. I know if you study speech and communications, which some of you have, no doubt, there's all types of methodology you're supposed to use when you speak. You know, you're not necessarily supposed to have your notes in your hands. I don't care. My notes are right here. I will be referring to a story in the scripture, which I will read in just a second, but I want to start you out with a quote. All right, pretend with me, if you will, that you're watching a film. A lot of times films will, will begin with a quote sometimes to kind of get you in the mind frame. You read a good piece of literature, it'll start out with a quote at the beginning. So let me begin you with this quote, and then we will end with this quote. We're going to bookend. And this is the idea, as Pastor Harris said, I want you to walk away with something. I would love for you to walk away with this idea. 
Now, of course, if you walk away the fact, man, that guy knew how to dress, you know, good voice, that's great if you, if you remember those things. But this is what I really want you to remember. This is C.S. Lewis out of his book, Mere Christianity. It says, goodness is either the great safety or the great danger according to the way you react to it. Is God good? Yes, he is. Is God love? You better believe it. But we're going to talk about it's funny, God is good, and God is love, yet usually those attributes of his that are elevated, and they should be, they're elevated at the expense of the fact that that doesn't keep him from speaking the truth. And the title of tonight's speech for you is Love Speaks Truth. Now, any of you English teachers, if you're upset that I didn't say truthfully because it's technically an adverb, I apologize. Please don't be offended. But love speaks true because you're about to graduate in a second and walk out of these doors. And as a young man said, you're about to enter into the rest of your life, right? You're about to be confronted, so to speak. It doesn't matter if you go to a Christian college or a non-Christian college. It doesn't matter. You're going to be confronted, right? And a lot of times I go, no, 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 we better not say anything. We We better not say anything. We better be nice. So that's how we go through life. We're nice. We're quiet. Now, I'm not going to advocate, you know, chopping people's heads off with a battle axe because that became illegal a couple years ago. But we're trying to strike a nice balance. I think Jesus is the best teacher, right? And we'll see him refer to a teacher in this passage. So just bear with me. I'm just going to read a couple verses. I'm going to come back down to you because I like being close. so far away. I'm going to watch these steps. I don't know how the ladies got up here with the heels. I was nervous for you, but you did it. I'm impressed. All right, here we go. I don't, I don't do the heel thing. Although I had the diaper bag in my hand tonight, and my little daughter's got this purse on. She's like, hey, look, Daddy, we match. You have a purse, and I have a purse. <laughs> Is she in here? Okay, thanks, Ella. Appreciate that. It was not a purse. It was a diaper bag. Mark chapter 10, listen to these few verses. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master or good teacher. You've referenced the good teachers that you have. And yes, if you're going to teach in a Christian school, you're going to have some teachers that know, you know they have to really like what they do, right? Because working with people is not, not the easiest thing in the, in the world. And they're obviously not rolling in the green, right? Like someone we're going to talk about here in just a second. Came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. This is the key verse. Jesus beholding him, loved him and said unto him, well, then I guess you're fine. I'll see you on the other side. Well, that's, that's not what he said. It says, Jesus behold him, beheld him and he loved him. So he loved him and yet he didn't hold back the truth and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. 7.35. I didn't look at the clock when I started. I'm going to assume I've gone five minutes. So I have just a few more minutes left, all right? They'll bring out the big hook, pull me off stage. It gets a little awkward. All right, so let's listen to this. Consider this passage with me for just a second. A rich young ruler, right? I did some Googling. The 10 richest, youngest people in the world, the number, the top three richest individuals, including number one, I'll sum it up in one word, or you can probably guess it. What's the one word? Facebook. Mr. Mark Zuckerberg. You look a lot like the guy. Oh, yeah. You ought to to Google him. He's pretty handsome. Okay. Mark Zuckerberg, the wealthiest, youngest man in the world. He is only 27 years old. That is young. It's still very young. 27 years old, he is worth. Now, I looked at two different websites, and the one I landed on was the dailybeast.com, and it claims that his net worth on paper is $28.4 billion. Not too bad, right? Facebook. How many of you right here on this row, these two rows, how many of you have a Facebook? Awesome. Right on. Okay. 
This guy, is, this guy would qualify, I think, as a rich young ruler. Now I thought, well, can I get someone younger who's also wealthy? And when I Googled that, I just came up with Justin Bieber. So I don't think we want to go that direction, all right? <laughs> Even though he's got great hair, you know? You know what I'm saying? I mean, baby, baby, baby. No, that's not good, that's not good. <laughs> So let's, let's put Mr. Mark Zuckerberg in the equation and let's really put yourself in the seat here, okay? Watch how he approaches Jesus Christ. This is awesome. In his approach, it says he ran and he knelt and he asked. This guy was aggressive. In his youth, right, he is passionate. He is energetic. Don't let anyone get in the way. Oh, you're young. You don't know anything. Yeah, there's a lot that you don't know. That's okay. If you knew everything already, you'd be kind of boring. But one of the things you have in your youth is you have a, an energy that those of us who are getting older lack, especially when you get kids. They just suck the life right out of you. I didn't say that out loud. That's why I whispered. <laughs> this guy is young. He runs to Jesus. He's probably pushing people out of the way, right? This makes the disciples upset. I can imagine. Let's not go there. He runs and he kneels. And you know, in whenever the you know, in biblical times, up in the, even the medieval periods, you kneel to someone, it's out of reverence. Of course, all the times in the scripture, when you're really reverential to someone, you're lying face down in the scriptures. We might reference that here in just a second. But he kneels before him. He's got a great approach. And he asks. He doesn't say, hey, give me what I want. He asks. Working with young people like I do, one of the things I've noticed, and I know I was guilty of it as well from time to time, more than I'd be proud to admit, there's this, this failure to approach leadership with authority. There's a failure to approach adults with, with, the, with the reverence that they deserve, right? Oh, we're friends. We're pals. You know, it doesn't matter that you've lived 10 or 20 more, 50 more years than I have and have gone through all the things that I have not yet gone through. But, you know, we're equals in the sense of I'm not going to treat you with respect. And yet this rich young ruler approaches Jesus with respect. He runs, shows us aggressiveness. This guy wants to have an answer. He's not lazy, as has been referenced by both young men tonight. He's not lazy. He's not saying, well, maybe my mom will go out and find the answer for me, right? Maybe I'll text a couple friends and they'll get the answer for me. Maybe I can Google it. No, he, he went and found Jesus, knelt before him out of reverence and said, good master or good teacher. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? That's an amazing question, right? So we see in his approach and his question, note his question, it's universal. You know how long people have been asking how they can live forever? A very long time, since the beginning of time. How am I going to live forever? Now, a lot of us ask it in a different light. A lot of us approach it in a different light. Christians, how do we live forever? We accept Jesus Christ in our heart as our personal Lord and Savior by grace through faith. But how do other people go about finding eternal life? Well, this guy named Ponce de Leon looked for the fountain of youth to live forever. Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade, film three before they entered the fourth one and just ruined the whole canon. But in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, they're looking for eternal life. When they pick up the goblet that Jesus would have, you know, drank out of, they're looking for eternal life. Joan Rivers, plastic surgery. That's how we're going to find eternal life, right? This is how we're going to live forever. We're going to ruin our lives. You know? But we want to live forever. There's something scary about the other side. And kudos to the rich young ruler who came in out of respect, with aggression, knelt down and said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Because this question is bugging me. One of these days, I'm not going to be young anymore. I'm going to die. That's a great thing to talk about at commencement, right? He knows, and he wants to be prepared. So we notice his approach, right? He's seeking an answer. Now let's look again at Jesus' answer briefly. He starts off with a question, right? He says, why callest thou me good? There is none but one that is God. Jesus, in a roundabout way, is saying, hey, you're calling me good? Do you realize what you're saying? Because really none of us are good. There's only one good, and that's God. And why did Jesus get crucified? Because he said, feed the poor. No. Why did Jesus get crucified? Because he was a Jew. No, that's not why he got crucified. Because he's from Nazareth. No, that's not why he got crucified either. Because he had the audacity to stand up and say, I am God. I'm Jehovah. I'm your Messiah. And they took him to the cross, right? So it's interesting that this rich young ruler calls him good and doesn't even really grasp what he is saying to the God of the universe, the one who entered this human flesh with all of its problems out of love, right? So why call us me good? There's none good but God. And of course, we know Jesus is God, right? We've mentioned, both men and I have mentioned, when we go out of here, 
when you graduate, not to give up the things you have been taught. Well, one of the things I know you've been taught here at Berean, if you've gone to the church from the pulpit, or if you've gone to the school, obviously what you have, right, is that Jesus is God. Don't, don't sway on that. Please don't sway on that. Because if Jesus is not God, he's just another good guy. And we got plenty of them. And we're not doing too great, right? So he, he, he is God. Please, please don't sway on that. So here's Jesus. He says, what, what are you doing? You know that I, you know, I'm God here. And he says, he refers to the commandments. You know the commandments. Da, 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 da. He lists them off. The last six, right? The first half tell people how to relate with God. But he goes right to how we deal with our fellow man. And this rich young ruler says, I've observed all of them. Now listen to this. This is also C.S. Lewis. It's the last time I'll, I'll quote him. Jesus starts off with the Ten Commandments, right? A lot of people will say, well, the Old Te Testament is not necessary because it's old, it's archaic, it's outdated. No, no, no. If the Bible says, if God's Word says that all of my words are profitable, if they're all inspired, then we need to bring the Old Testament right along with us. And Paul mentioned several times throughout the New Testament, had it not been for the law, I would not have known just how bad I was and just how much I needed salvation by grace through faith. So the law cannot save us but it's a good way of pointing us in the right direction, right? Listen to this by C.S. Lewis. The road to the promised land runs past Sinai. The moral law may exist to be transcended, which it did when Jesus Christ said, I'm, I'm come that the law may be fulfilled, right? All the law is right here. But there is no transcending it for those who have not first admitted its claims upon them and then tried with all their strength to meet that claim and fairly and squarely face the fact of their failure. How many of you like to fail? You don't have to raise your hand. Obviously, none of you don't like to fail. One of the major problems I think you're going to run into, and this is, not, this is not done with survey, I understand. This is just from interacting and the different things I've read and talking with different people and listening to other preachers and so on and so forth. One of the, I think, the major problems, it's not just today, it's been going on for centuries. People don't like to admit that they have problems, even when they seriously have problems, right? I'm okay, you're okay. And this rich young ruler doesn't think he has a problem, because when Jesus says, you know the commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, and he goes on and on, the rich young ruler says, I've kept all of them since my youth. Now, he's probably the overachiever in the classroom, right? And we're in the back of the row like, jerk, you know? Brown nose, and we don't like this guy. Oh, I've kept all of them since my youth. <laughs> when I first read this text, getting ready a year ago, I thought, man, what a jerk. That's the time someone needs to throw a rock. Boom, hit him right in the head, right? That's when Jesus needs to call him out. And Jesus does, but it says there in the scripture that he looked at him and he loved him. It's interesting how Jesus doesn't nail him like he does a lot of the Pharisees, right? Does he call this rich young ruler a viper? Doesn't call him a viper. Doesn't call him a hypocrite. See, the problem the Pharisees had, a pro problem a lot of us have in church, even though a lot of outsiders want to claim, you know, there's so many hypocrites in the church. Yeah, there's hypocrites everywhere, right? Move on. Let's get over that. One of the reasons Jesus called out the Pharisees is their hypocrisy kept them. They knew they were not doing the right thing. They just wouldn't admit it. They wanted to look good in front of people. Now, here's what's different about the rich young ruler. He has something in this case, let's label it what it is, ignorance. He's ignorant of the fact. He legitimately believes he has kept every one of those laws since his youth. He's not, in his mind, he's not lying. He really believes it. He is being sincere. He's not a hypocrite. And so Jesus doesn't say, you're a viper, you're a liar. It says he looks at him and he loved him. And what we've already read, he doesn't say, well, then I guess you're fine because I don't want to hurt your feelings. We're all winners. That's not what he says. One thing thou lackest. ESPN Radio, Scott Van Pelt and the Scott Van Pelt Show. He always does his one big thing. And they say it just like that. One big thing. And he talks about one big thing in the sports world. Jesus hits him with one big thing. Now he tells him to sell everything you have and to give it to the poor. Oh, yeah, that means that Jesus hates people who have money. Yeah, I knew it. It's right there in the scripture. If you're rich, you're an evil person. You need to give us all your money so I don't have to get up every day and work. Jesus is not getting on to him because money is bad, right? The love of money is the root of all evil. 
Jesus is getting to the heart of the matter with this rich young ruler. He knows this guy doesn't have a problem with adultery. He knows this guy doesn't have a problem with stealing. He knows this guy doesn't have a problem with maybe talking bad about people beside him or lying. What this guy has a problem with is money is my love. It supersedes my relationship with God. And every one of you sitting right here right now, money might be it or it could be any else, anything else. And as the scripture says, anything that takes a place of God in our life, that supersedes God in our life is a what? An idol. You don't have to make it into an actual object and bow down and give it food. But if it supersedes God in your life, it is an idol. And every one of you sitting right here, you know what it is tonight. And it might change a year from now. It might change 10 years from now. What is it? If love speaks true, and it does, Jesus holds the standard. He doesn't change it because he's a nice guy. He doesn't back off and say, well, I I don't really want to tell him what's going on here. I want to withhold the truth from him. Do you know another thing the Pharisees and the lawyers were, were accused of doing by Jesus there in the book of Luke? You withhold the truth from people. You masquerade it, that you have to follow all these different laws and all. He gets on to the Pharisees one time. You sacrifice your mint and your rue. You do all these little things that you forget the love of God and judgment. He's calling him out on it. And this rich young ruler, the Bible says he looked at him and he loved him, and yet he held nothing back. He says, you need to give up that one thing that is more important to you than I am. He tells him, take up your cross. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rich young ruler taking up a cross? Now, let's pause right here. We, you've heard this before, but it's good to be reminded of, right? The cross in that day, people weren't walking around with crosses around their necks. Cross tattoos, right? Cross earrings. Yeah, yo, cross bracelet. What up? That's not what they were doing because the cross was for the criminals. Your body was going to be ripped apart. You're going to be splayed out for everyone to see naked. It was an embarrassing place to go. Take up your cross. Whoa, Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think so. And follow, what does he say? Follow me. Follow me. If love speaks true, and it does, this rich young ruler is probably a really nice guy, probably a good dresser probably a hard worker, which is excellent. On the list of human qualities that you would want to strive to have, this would be the guy. He probably had a lot of followers on Facebook and Twitter. And yet he lacked this one element in his life that he would not put it aside and let Christ take over in his life. So for you tonight, that could be salvation. Even if we're in a Christian school, right? I didn't get saved until I was a freshman in college. Salvation could be what you need to get, right? It's free, it's there. Or it could just simply be in your life. What is it that supersedes God in your life? What could that be? The young man said, finding God's will in your life. You're going to have a hard time finding it when you have something standing in your way between yourself and God. And God loves you more than anyone else can. And I'm sure all of you have had some people in your life that love you dearly. God loves you more than anyone else can, and yet he's holding nothing back, and he's saying, what are you going to do? What is more important than me in your life? What do you need to set to the side and take up your cross and follow me? And now the, the passage moves on. We're not going to touch base there more like the disciples. Like, well, who can get saved if rich people can't get saved? Jesus says, well, with men, things are impossible. With me, nothing is impossible. So salvation's for everyone. But let's go back to the rich young ruler. I love this in Scripture. This is one thing the Christian film industry could probably get their handles on. It doesn't resolve the rich young ruler's problem. Do you know if the rich young ruler sold everything and followed Christ? We don't know, do we? It's left hanging. So we can insert ourselves in that rich young ruler's shoes and we can make the choice that he cannot make. I hope he does. I hope he did. Maybe he did. I hope you do. One more quote. This is a good good one. And then I got to end on the C.S. Lewis because that's what I said I was going to do. All right. This is out of a good book called Give Them Grace, How to Dazzle Your Kid with the Love of Jesus. Now, you don't have kids. That's fine. That's fine. But the principle applies. In one minute, it says, in less than one minute, Jesus annihilated decades of law keeping. You love your goodness and your riches. You think you're good, but you're actually bankrupt and sinful. This, this young guy was in love with following the rules, which is great. We need to follow the rules, right? People don't follow the rules and they make it hard on the rest of us. 
but he thought that was what was going to save him. Jesus says, no, I've already taken care of that for you. So again, back to C.S. Lewis, and we're done. Goodness is either the great safety or the great danger according to the way you react to it. And I hope you react well. Thank you again for your time. I hope you have an excellent night, and I hope you have an excellent future. following students have completed the course of study as outlined by the state of North Carolina for graduation. On behalf of Berean Baptist Academy, it is my privilege to present the following seniors for commencement. Keith Nathaniel Adams. I began attending Berean Baptist Academy in the third grade. My parents are Donald and Sandra Adams. My dad works as the high, sp high school principal at Berean, and my mother works as a sixth grade teacher. I trusted Christ as my savior when I was six years old, when my mother led me to the Lord. My favorite high school memory was this year's ski trip. I had a good time snowboarding with my fellow Koreans, and I also got to go tubing for the first time, which was an awesome experience. I plan on attending Pensacola Christian College in the fall and studying mechanical engineering, and then specifically furthering my studies into the field of robotics. My favorite scripture verse is Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Over these past few years of school, there have been quite a few people who have influenced my life greatly. Mom and Dad, thank you for always taking care of my every need and always providing godly examples in my life. I love you both so much. My sister Ashley, thank you for being someone that I can always talk to about anything at any time. Greg. Thanks for being my best friend my whole life. You're such a boss. To my girlfriend, Ashley, I can't thank you enough for always being there for me and for being someone that I can talk to about anything. You're my closest friend. Andrew Whiting, thanks for being such a good friend to me these past few years. You're awesome, man. Clark, you're my oldest friend and I will never forget you. Thanks for being so close and always giving me encouraging words my whole life. Sean, Keenan, and Matthew, thanks for becoming, becoming some of my closest friends. I'm going to miss you guys a lot next year. Pastor Sturm, thank you for being such a godly example and influence in my life and for being the coolest soccer coach ever. And finally, last but not least, to my whole class, thank you all for being the coolest class ever. I love you all so much. Tay Sig On. I began attending Berrien Baptist Academy in ninth grade. My parents are Ang Kyung and Choi Sun Ae. They are the one who had most influence in my life, and I love them so much. After graduation, I will fly to Korea and enjoy my time with my family. My favorite memory of school year is this year's soccer season. Whether in practice or in games, I had a great time with my, our teammates and coach. My favorite scripture is Isaiah 41:10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee, yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I want to thank some people. First, I would like to thank God who sent me here. Four years ago, I did not even imagine graduating high school in America, but he planted everything for me. I want to thank my parents and sister. Even though I'm not an excellent son or brother, they have trusted me no matter what. I would like to thank my guardian, Smith and Colin's family. Especially Bond's family, I had a great time with you guys this year. Mr. and Mrs. Bond, you guys are a great example of godly men and women, so I learned how to be a true Christ follower. And T.G., Clark, and Gary, you guys are my awesome brothers. I'm going to miss three, all three of you and Zapagetti. I would also thank my classmates and Korean buddies. Because of them, I could have more fun at school. I also thanks Mrs. Ivy and Mrs. Cantrell. They helped me many times and fed me with amazing Korean food. Moreover, I don't thanks to Jin and Joseph, Joy and Sue. Without them, my high school life would be boring. I cannot imagine going to school without you guys. Lastly, I thanks all my teachers. 
they taught me not only academic stuff, but also the Word of God. Serenity Noel Andrews. <laughs> High school graduation is about looking back on who you were and who you've become. I am only the person I am today because of some very special people. I'm here today first of all because of my parents. They are the ones who got me through when I didn't think I could make it any longer. When friends left, I always had my parents, my brothers, and my sisters. I love my family and don't know what I would do without them. Being at Berean, I have met some amazing teachers. I have developed a love for history and literature. Miss Katie Love has taught me that there is a great importance in the words we use. Developing a broad vocabulary and understanding of words allows us to create clear ideas of everyday beliefs and values. Mr. Germany and Mr. Farmer, thanks for giving me a greater biblical worldview. When it comes to history, choosing whether something in the past is biblical or not will allow us to make wise decisions for the future. And thank you Pastor Sean and Pastor Bill for teaching me how to study the Bible. I would like to thank Bianca. I met you in the second grade at church, and we were not always friends. When you began attending Berean with me, we grew closer, and I knew that we were in a friendship that would last. Thanks for sticking with me after all these years. Thanks, Duran, Wilson, and Enoch for making my life interesting. There is never a dull moment with you guys. Bethany, thanks for just hanging out with me. Baking cookies and making messes are just part of high school I will never forget, even if the guys ate all of them. And finally, Elizabeth. I do not know what I would do without you. I love you so much, and I know you feel the same way about me. Whenever I need a shoulder to cry on or a friend to tell dumb jokes to, you are always there crying and laughing with me. I am so lucky to have you, and mostly to the one who gave me all these people, my God and my Savior. He is the reason Be Berean exists. He is the reason I am graduating, and he must be the reason for what I will do after this day. Siang Kiang Bed. Before I start, I praise the Lord because without Him I'm empty and meaningless even though I'm alive. Dear Lord, I'm thankful for you for everything that I never deserve. Please always remind me that I would not be here if you did not allow me to be here. Amen. I began attending Brian Baptist Academy when I was in ninth grade. While I was attending BBA, four years seemed really long but simultaneously really short. One fifth of my life was poured into BBA. It was an honor for me to attend BBA not because it was less, less expensive tuition and not because it is private school but because I got to know more about God and learn how to defend my faith. I thank my parents Sang Chao Bae and Nam Hee Wang because they are not only supported me financially but they also strengthened me when I felt homesick and tired while I was attending BBA. Also, I thank the following teachers, Pastor Sean who taught me fundamental doctrine of gospel, Pastor Stern who is perfect example of being a servant of Christ, Mr. Turveson who helped me to have good knowledge in worldview, politics, business math, and finance, Mr. Adams who welcomed me every day with a happy smile, Mr. Usley who always welcomed me when I had math questions for four years, Ms. Mrs. Autumn who let me learn science, Mrs. Hawk, who helped me to enjoy reading English books, and Miss Simon, who encouraged me with kind words and dramatic speech. I also thank for Bryant family, who allowed me to stay as a family member with them. Thank for Tess aunt, who considered me as her family by offering Korean food. Thank for Driller family, who remind me important of family prayer. I will never forget all the grace that I had in BBA. After all, I'm going to University of Washington, and I will be major in computer engineering. Clark Emery Vaughn. I began attending Berean Baptist Academy in the second grade. My parents are Tom and Michelle Vaughn. 
My dad is a nurse anesthetist at Scotland Memorial Hospital, and my mom is the office manager here at the school. I was truly saved three years ago at the Anchorage. I said a prayer when I was five years old, but I was not truly saved until the Anchorage. A few people that have influenced my life are my best friends, Sean and Keith, as well as my parents. Sean and Keith, you guys are the best friends that anyone could ever ask for. Even though we don't get along on very rare occasions, I still love you guys and thank you for being awesome in all the good times that we've had together. Mom and Dad, I love you guys more than anything and thank you for putting up with me for 18 years. Not sure how you did it, but good job. To all my other friends who, have, who I have not mentioned, I have not forgotten about you. Andrew Mosley, Jordan, and Jason, have fun at lunch now that we are gone. Just go easy on Andrew. Tony An, you are still the best Korean in the entire universe. Have fun back in Korea, buddy. Uh, my favorite high school memory is the ski trip this year when I got to hang out with all my best friends. I plan to attend FTCC for two years majoring in criminal justice, then transfer to Liberty University. My favorite Bible verse is Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bianca Alexis Farmer. Swedish false stunt, formatting footnotes, and writing book reviews. With that knowledge comes more responsibility, and responsibility is not to be taken lightly. With it comes more choices, more decisions, and usually more stress. Without the help of so many influential people, I would not be where I am today. One of my favorite high school memories is sharing my writing with Miss Katie Love and reading the story she had written. Because of her influence, I plan to attend one of the UNC branches to major in either English or creative writing. My Aunt Diana and my parents likewise have helped me make so many hard decisions for my future. I want to thank my sister Brianna and Kevin who are two of the strongest people I know. I love them very much. Likewise, I love my cheer coaches and my cheerleading squads who have always brought out the fun in my life. Lastly, I would like to thank Brooke, Brianna, Serenity, Jalen, Hannah, Bethany, and Alina for being the most amazing friends. For every new thing I have been taught, I have been given someone to help me through it, which just proves how amazing God is. Academy in the 10th grade. My parents are Donna and Greg Jackson. My dad influenced my life by being a strong believer in Christ and helping me to be the best athlete I can possibly be. My mom influenced my life by being a strong encourager in everything I do and just being there for me and helping me be successful. I love you so much. Also, I would like to thank my grandma and my granddad for believing in me and knowing that I can do so well means a lot. Also, I would like to thank the rest of my family for just being there for me in some point in time in my life. I trusted Christ as my Savior three years ago in August, and the reason it took, took me so long to get saved is that I was nervous about what everyone would think. All the teachers and staff have influenced my life in some way. 
while here at Berean Baptist Academy. But I would like to thank in particular Mr. Adams because of his testimony and what it stands for. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Farmer for pushing me to do more on the baseball field and knowing I could work hard. My favorite high school memory is when I, I caught the game-winning ball at state last year. It was so great because we advanced to the state championship. I plan to attend FTCC in the fall and major in teaching PE. My favorite scriptures are John 3.16 and Philippians 4.13. I would like to say thank you again to everyone that's helped me throughout my time here at Berean Baptist Academy. In particular, all my great friends, you mean a lot to me and what, what you have done for me and my life. I will never forget the memories I had here. Keenan Daniel McIver. <laughs> I began attending Berean Baptist Academy in the eighth grade. My parents are Portia and Kenneth MacGyver. Mom, you're beyond wonderful. You're the mother that only a child can dream of. Every time I see you, I say to myself, I know that I'm blessed because this woman has put up with my hardheadedness every day and still ha hasn't kicked me out of the house yet. You're the main definition of what a mother is. Dad, thank you for everything that you have done for me. We don't always see eye to eye, but you have always supported me in every decision I have made. You have shown me what it means to persevere and how to be a man. I thank God to, to have you as my father. My sister Farron, you have always been in my corner. I would not have been able to make it here without you. Here's how much I love you. I think of people that are dear to me as pieces of my heart. And you, mom, and dad are the three main pieces of my heart that I can't live without. Thank you to all my little brothers and sisters in BBA and family for your support. For every single one of you have a special place in my heart. Thank you, Sean, for showing me what it means to be loyal and a best friend. Sarah, for showing me how to have fun. Isabella, for teaching me how to be humble and a great friend. Clark, how to laugh at corny things when they're never really funny. Keith, for being a good rival and always being real. Andrew, how to be wise and to think things through. Joy, for showing me what it means to be a creative artist. Joseph, for showing me how to work hard. Jen, how to lead. Tony, how to speak Korean. Sue, how to be quiet. Matthew, how to have fun being yourself. Bianca, not to be afraid to express my ideas. And Serenity, for showing me how to love music. Well, class of 2012, we finally did it. And our journey awaits for us to change the world and for us to fulfill our destiny that God has stored for us. Whatever you pursue to do in your journey, do it up big to your best of ability. Not for you, but for God, because that is the main reason why we exist, to serve God. I will be majoring in media arts at Felva State University. God bless. Sean Michael Miller. I began attending Berean Baptist Academy in the first grade. My parents are John and Don Miller. My dad is a machine coat changer at Goodyear Tire Company, and my mom is a homemaker and a former Berean Baptist Church and Academy secretary. My favorite Bible verse is John 16:33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. My favorite high school memory was a senior trip, where I was able to have the greatest time with my closest friends. This fall, I plan to attend FTCC and major in criminal justice. After at least two years of college, I plan on enlisting in the Coast Guard. The people that have influenced my life the most are my parents. Mom, Dad, there's no way I could have made it here without you. I love you guys and thank you for all that you have done for me and all the sacrifices that you do not have to make. Dave, Sis, I could not have asked for a better brother and sister. You guys and your families have always been my role models and I thank you for that. Pastor Sean, Pastor Grimes, Mr. Farmer, and Mr. Snurm. I learned so much about the Bible my last three years of high school. Your teaching changed my life and my perspective on so many things. Keenan, Keith, and Andrew, you guys are bosses. And Jason, Jordan, Clark, Matt, Lauren, Nicolette, and Andrew, you guys never fail to brighten up my day at lunch. You guys seriously rock, never forget that. 
To my graduating class of 2012, I will miss you so much. Through thick and thin, we've always been such a tight class. Let's not allow graduation to change that. Jibam Park. attending Brian Baptist Academy in ninth grade. My parents are in Sub Park and Kyung Sub Kim. I live with Mr. and Mrs. Hawk right now. I play I began attending Brian Baptist Academy in eleventh grade. I plan to attend the School of the Visual Art in New York while majoring in illustration. My father's name is Byung Dong Park and my mother's name is Hyo Jin Kim. When I decided to study abroad, I was always discouraged by negative comments that it was too late or too hard to accomplish. However, my parents always encouraged me and they would always say, we believe in you and we will pray for you. I would like to thank thank my parents for everything they have done. I love you both so much. My American parents are Jason Curry and Teresa Curry. As all people know, Mrs. Curry's cooking is best in the world. She is the best American cook that I ever met. So I always thought that I was lucky to stay with Curry's family. I will miss her food when I go back to New York. Thanks Curry for everything. My senior class, some of them will remember when I was here. I attended this school when I was in fourth grade. I was the same class as in the class of the 2012. I'm so happy to meet them again, and I'm very delighted to be graduating with them. My bestest miss teacher, Miss Dice, Anni, thank you for the beginning, not only teacher, but also the best American sister I ever had. I want to miss the Adam for allowing me to attend this school. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. I'm going to miss you singing whenever you see me. Lastly, I will never forget my old Korean friends. When I miss Korean food, it was a great time to get together and remember, not to mention it the awesome samgyeopsal and kimchi. Thank you for being the best friends I could ever have. Jin Young Park. I began attending Brian Baptist Academy in ninth grade. My parents are in Sub Park and Kyung Sub Kim. I live with Mr. and Mrs. Hawk right now. I plan to attend the University of Washington majoring in business. My favorite high school memories are when I went kayaking with Mr. Torverson and eight other people and the senior trip. Honestly, there are so many memories that I want to keep in my brain forever. The four years I spent in Berean are my favorite so far in my life. First, I thank my parents and their tremendous love and care. I also thank all people in the school and the church. They all have influenced my life in a good ways and I could learn a lot from them. I thank God who allowed everything to happen. Also to my great aunt and other Korean students and people I met in here. They have been so friendly and they mean a lot to me. I will miss every single person here. And Hawk's family, Mr. Hawk, Mrs. Hawk, Matthew, Miss Becca, Amber, and Marley. My great American mom, dad, brother, and sisters. You are awesome people. I will never forget you guys. And Justin, while I live with him, we had a lot of fun and precious memories. And my classmates, there are a total of 14 beside me. I love you all. I also give thanks to my student government people. I know I was really inexperienced and everything was new to me. Thanks to Ms. Stiles, an awesome counselor, and officers, and all the representatives. Without your help and patience, I wouldn't be able to stand on that. 
Because of you guys, I really enjoyed being the president of the student government. Thank you all for your amazing love and sweetness. God bless you all. Sarah Ann Scott. I began attending Brain Baptist Academy in kindergarten. My parents are Arnold and Sherry Scott. Both of them have influenced me greatly, and I am very thankful for all the sacrifices they have made throughout the years to send me here. I know it hasn't always been easy, but like my mom says, God has always provided. I know he will continue to do the same as I spend my next two years of education at FTCC while majoring in culinary arts. Two other people who have influenced me greatly, whether they realize it or not, are my sister Samantha for her willingness to do what is right, and my brother Arliss for encouraging me in life and in my quest to be healthy. I would also like to thank Miss Katie Love for giving me a love for English, Mistress Townsend for not only being a teacher, but a friend I know I can talk to about anything, Mistress Princeton for making my science years a joy and continuing to be a friend and mentor in all things healthy, Miss Simmons for teaching me how to speechify better in an entertaining way, Mr. Farmer for giving me a love for history and politics, Mr. Toverson for his sarcasm, for making economics and worldview as interesting as possible, and yes, I will continue to read about activities before trying them out. For example, he poked fun at me for reading a book about running. And all of my other teachers who have prepared me for my independent years. Also, all of my friends at work who have been making those long nights at work fun. I can't really say what my favorite high school memory is, but some of my favorite times were in the classroom whenever we were pulling together to convince our teachers to go to the coffee shop. We promise we will focus on our studies and buy you something. It's strange to think that I won't be coming here after this summer, but I know we are all ready for the next step in life and will succeed if we allow God to guide our lives. A verse that I find appropriate for this occasion is Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies be behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I pray some I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Soon Young Shim. I began attending Brian Baptist Academy in ninth grade. I plan to attend the College of Southern Nevada, majoring in hotel management. My parents' names are Song Yun Shim and Song Suk Park. I did not have an opportunity to study about the Bible when I was in Korea. Since attending Brian Baptist Academy, I could learn a lot of things about God I have never heard before. I would like to thank Pastor Shan, Pastor Bill, and Mr. Toberson for challenging me to learn about God and Christ my Savior. My favorite school memory is Anchorage 2008. It was my first time to go Anchorage with my schoolmates, and it was a lot of fun to do various activities. I could have a have lot of valuable memories in Anchorage every year. Also, it was my first time getting a huge bruise on my head. Thank you, kid. I want to thank several people. First, I would like to thank my parents for everything they done for me. I really thank God for giving me good parents like them. Also, I want to thank my American family, the Colbys. I really enjoyed living with, with you guys, and thank you for being good, good family to my sister and me. I would also like to thank my great aunt. Without her, I would not be able to get an opportunity to come here. Furthermore, I would like to thank my sister Jun. She has always been a nice and good sister to me, even though I was not a good sister to her. I want to thank my senior class for helping me a lot. Also, I want to thank Mr. Adams for allowing me attending here. I am really thankful to Ms. Stiles and Bonds for helping me a lot. And thank you, Korean guys. Because of you guys, I enjoyed going to school. Lastly, I want to thank the Lord for giving me an opportunity meeting the people around me and having a good family. Isabella Torres.
I am a girl who has sinned many sins, but was chosen by God to be one of his daughters. I don't know when I was saved, but I know that I believe the truth now, and am obligated to live according to it. God gave me two faithful parents, Dennis and Josephina Torres, whose instruction and wisdom I will always need and value. I will cry so much when they PCS. Nobody but God has loved me as much as they have. God has blessed me with a sister who has always been ready to comfort me when I needed it. God has also blessed me by allowing me to be nurtured here at Berean Baptist Academy since the first grade with Mrs. Fuller. Some of my favorite memories of high school would be the soccer seasons. I try to get my life's lessons out of that sport. Even though it hurts to keep running, you're letting yourself, your coach, and your team down if you don't persevere through the heat. After you keep going long enough and shooting enough, God will help you make a goal, even when your ligament is torn. It taught me that God hears prayer. Thus far, I have desired to be a translator after college because of my love for foreign people and languages and my love for traveling. Wherever I go, I want to be able to live out the gospel and glorify God. One of my favorite Bible verses is Ephesians 1, 3-6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. I am thankful for the care and love that my friends and my boyfriend have showed me, for their patience, and also for the words of advice from my teachers, Miss Love, Miss Simmons, Mr. Farmer, and Pastor Bill. I'll remember your life lessons, and I'll miss you guys. Andrew Dale Whiting.
do not. Okay. Stay seated. I'm going to pray over the graduates, and then uh, we will proceed. Master, thank you for the opportunity to hear the word of God tonight. Thank you for allowing us to hear testimonies that talk about your victory in our life. You have not been absent. You are the God who speaks and reaches into our lives. And you have been powerful. You have been loud. You have been active. And now, Lord, as we look to the future, much has been said this evening about the type of people that we trust that our 15 graduates will be as disciples of the Lord Jesus. And we have all spent time, I suppose, thinking about those who have not gone on and brought glory to your name, but that is not why we are talking to you now. We are asking you that while they look forward to years at school, employment, more responsibilities as adults, people with families later on, we're asking you, dear Lord, that tomorrow they would wake up and, yes, indeed, still praise you. That every time that they think about Berean, that you will call to mind that there is coming a day of judgment in which every solemn sung song and every sermon and every intimate moment they have had with God in these hallways and on this campus and on those buses and across the street, I pray that they would have witness that eternity will echo that they have had opportunity that is incredible, unthinkable, unspeakable to hear the riches of God's word time and again. And I ask you to be very real in their lives so that they will not forget the things which they have learned. And that, as Paul said, that they would both hear and receive and do them. And we ask you, dear Lord, that this day will live for their, for their lives and those who follow behind them in their memory and that you would get glory because of the death of your Son who has earned you the glory. We ask you in his name, the one who has abolished death, King Jesus, our Lord and our Master and our soon coming King. Amen. I began attending Berean Baptist Academy in the 10th grade. My parents are Kevin and Deborah Whiting. They have without a doubt been the two most influential people in my life. I would like to thank my dad, first of all, for teaching me how to be a man. In a day when the lines seem to be getting more and more blurred, my dad has never faltered in showing what God expects of a man. He showed me how important it is to take care of your family no matter what, and he showed me how to work. I've never seen a harder worker than my dad. I remember in times past when he would work until 1 or 2 in the morning and then wake up at 5 to start his day all over. My mom was also very influential in my life. She showed me the importance of having compassion. She showed me how to treat others and was always reminding me to seek the will of God before I make any decisions and to always, always trust Him. One thing that I will always remember about my mom is how much she loves her children and how much that love shows through her actions. Both my parents have influenced my life in countless ways, and without them, I would never have come to know Christ as my Savior. I trusted Christ as my Savior at a camp at the age of 14. I trusted in a prayer that I said when I was young, but noticed that I had not really understood the gospel, and that there was no real evidence in my life. Shortly after my salvation, I moved to North Carolina and began attending BBA. I would not have made it through high school if it weren't for my friends. I would like to give a special thanks to my friends Keith and Hope. Without them, high school would have been boring. I would also like to thank all of my other friends, but because I've made so many, I will not call them all out. You know who you are, and I thank God for you guys. 
It was through you, my parents, and my teachers that I am able to graduate high school and eventually move on to Pensacola Christian College, where I will be majoring in computer informational systems. Finally, I thank God, because without Him, nothing is possible. For your patience. Seniors now, please rise. And I proudly present to you Berean Baptist Academy's 35th graduating class, the class of 2012. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much for coming out to the 2012 graduation. I think you can see that these graduates have enjoyed their years in school. Now it's our opportunity to go home and express our appreciation for their hard work. We're going to have a reception in our fellowship center. If you go through any of these doors, this one or any of these, go to the right and then take another right and you'll see the fellowship center. Thank you for coming. You're dismissed.